Thank you for joining me today. Today, we want to talk about prayer. I'm a person who prays all the time and everybody seems to pray differently. I pray in more and I talk to God like, you know, you talk to your friend, but as far as praying, I command. We're going to talk about that today. I'll, we're going to pray and get started. Lord, we thank you for this day. We honor you. We glorify you, Lord. We appreciate everything you've done for us. We ask today that you will let me speak with your words and let people hear what you're saying. And we declare wholeness to everyone in the sound of our voice. In Jesus' name, amen. give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and hearts to respond. In Jesus' name, amen. Our approach to prayer concerning the country, our families, and the church must change. We pray as Jesus prayed and with his authority. We are made in the image and likeness of God of the universe. We are born again with God's spirit indwelling us. We operate in Jesus' stead in this room. Therefore, we do not come to the Father begging, complaining, or whining about what is happening here. We come to God as sons, heirs according to the promise, joint heirs with Christ. A son comes to the Father's house and raids the fridge. We are entitled to what is in the fridge. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. If two of you agree on earth about anything they ask for, it will be done for them for my Father in heaven. That's Matthew 18, 18. Also, whatever we forgive on earth will be forgiven in heaven, and what we do not forgive will not be forgiven. That is John 20, 23. Look at the example the Father gave when he created light, the animals, the stars, and man. He said, light be, and light appeared, and it's still appearing, creating more light. The next example, Jesus, when he spoke to the wind, peace be still. These are our examples. God is our example. Ephesians 5.1 states, be imitators as God of God as dear children. John 14.12 states, truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me will do the works that I do also, and greater works than these, because I am going to my Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. We are ambassadors for Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.21. An ambassador speaks in behalf of the leader of the country, just like the leader was standing there himself. Love has been perfect among us in this, so that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. This is 1 John 4, 17. As he is, so are we in this world. We are ambassadors for Christ, as if God was standing here begging people to be reconciled to God. That is 2 Corinthians 5, 21. So we're ambassadors for Christ. That means we stand in the place of the leader authority of the, of the world, begging people to come to God. And it says in 1 John, as he is, so are we in this world. So just like the ambassador thing, as he is, we're standing here in God's stead, saying, be reconciled to God. If you recall, that's what happened at the beginning. At the beginning. Satan lied to people, and they got, uh, they got away from God. And ever since then, God has done everything he can to restore man back. That's why Jesus was sent to the cross, so that there could be a restoration. Jesus said in Matthew 28, All authority has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. We speak in his stead, his authority. We bind and loose, we allow and don't allow. We have no need to beg. We only command in his name. Demons and authorities must obey. Now, since you guys have been around me a little while, you know how I pray. I talk to God, right? And then I speak things into being like, in the name of Jesus, be made whole. Shalom, wholeness. Nothing missing, nothing broken. So if I'm praying for my children, the Bible says in Isaiah 54:13. My children are taught of the Lord. My children are taught of Yehovah. And great is their peace. 
Great is their shalom. So what we do in that situation is, in the name of Jesus, my children are taught of the Lord, and great is their wholeness, peace, prosperity, completeness. That's how I pray that prayer. Other scriptures, by his stripes you were healed. By his stripes I am healed. And you can take a scripture and personalize it, like in Psalms 91, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, in Him will I trust. I dwell in the shelter of the Most High. I abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I my trust in the Lord. He protects me. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is Leslie's shepherd, she shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures. The Lord leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for God is with me. His rod and his staff comforts me. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Okay, let's look at Psalms 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is Leslie who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed are my children who walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor do my children stand in the way of sinners. Nor do my children sit in the seat of the scoffer. Scoffer. My children's delight is in the law of the Lord. And in the law of the Lord my children delight day and night. And my children shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth the fruit in its season. My children's leaves shall not wither, and whatever my children do prospers. We pray the word that way. You find a scripture that you want to agree with in the word, and you personalize it. And you don't get on the floor and beg. <clears throat> Our children don't beg us for stuff. They walk in the house and take what they want. They always have. Remember, we're sons of God. Beloved, now are we the sons of God? It does not yet appear what we shall be. And when we see him, we shall see him like we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. That's in, that's in first, second, or third John. But everything you see in the Bible, you can personalize it. The Bible says that all God's promises are yes and amen. So you can take a promise like, okay, we're going to Deuteronomy 28 and be like, I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed coming out. My kids are blessed in the city. They're blessed in the field. They're blessed coming in. They're blessed going out. <clears throat> There's no limitation. If God promised it in the word to somebody, it's mine. The Bible says that Moses when he, when he died, his, his eye was not dim, nor was his natural strength abated. Well, if his eye wasn't dim and his natural strength wasn't abated, then mine doesn't have to be dim, and I don't have to lose my strength in my old age. Jesus went about doing good, destroying all the works of the devil. If he destroyed it, it's like it never happened before. And so right now I'm receiving healing in every situation in my life, from my face surgeries to my, the trauma that I had in my past. I'm receiving that healing because Jesus destroyed all the works of the devil. This is what we're doing here. We're taking God by, at his word. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it? Will he not do it? Has he spoken it? Will he not make it good? He will not alter the word that comes out of his mouth. The word that comes out of his mouth doesn't return void, but accomplishes everything that he sent it out to do. He watches after his word to perform it. Either we believe God or we don't. If God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Or if God said it, that settles it, and I believe it. We're serving God because he's honoring his word and he's true to his word. And so we don't have to like worry if God's gonna honor his word. That was the first question in the, in the Garden of Eden. Satan told Eve, God really didn't mean what he said. Either we believe God or we don't, and if we don't, we might as well go do something else. Let's just think about that a minute. Okay, well, I'm going to pray now and stop talking. I bless you in Jesus' name. I declare wholeness to your body from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Let every area of your life be whole. In Jesus' name, amen.